associated with the energy improvements that we made in the last tutorial, as well as the renewable energy systems. So to do that, we should um, first uh, click on this Suite A Energy, and you'll see that you need to enter a, actually I'll delete these, you need to enter a base electricity rate and a base fuel rate. And these you should get from your energy bills. In my case, I've got for Worcester Hall, 20 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity and four cents a kilowatt hour for fuel. And then for the existing annual electricity use, I'm gonna to go to my base case, my base case here and I'll zoom in so you can see this a little better. I want to sum my electricity uses. In this case, it's going to be cooling, ventilation, lighting, equipment, and process are all electricity. And then for heating, or sorry, for the fuel, I want to include the heating and the hot water. So I've got the electricity and fuel and annual energy use. I'm gonna copy those over to my cost template right there. You'll start to see these graphs populate. I'll explain them in a second. The second step is to take your suite of improvements and input the annual electricity and fuel use for that. So I'm gonna go back to my optimization um, sheet and I'm gonna go all the way over to the right where I've got my uh, same systems. So I'm gonna sum the cooling lighting equipment process, and then I'm gonna sum the heating and hot water. And I'm gonna take those and copy them into the cost spreadsheet there. And then lastly, I want to input the elect on-site electricity generation and on-site fuel offset. For electricity generation, I would go to the energy end use here, PVs and wind, so those are both electricity generation. So I'm gonna sum those, it's 9,582 kilowatt hours per year. For fuel, I don't have any offsets I'm proposing for this. You could, in the case that you are offsetting, say uh, heating with solar hot water or using uh, biofuels or some other kind of fuel offset, you could record it there. Finally, the last thing it's asking for in yellow is the loan rate. And what I mean by loan rate is the annual percentage rate that you could get to borrow money. Loans are a complicated subject that we're not gonna talk a lot about in this class, but a quick way of generating an idea of a loan, what you could borrow money for, for a home improvement project or a, build, a small building project, would be to look at mortgage rates. So I'm gonna look at mortgage rates in California. Bankrate.com lists a 30-year fixed mortgage at 3.83%, you can get a home improvement loan for about double um, mortgage price. So if I take that 3.83 and multiply by two, I get 7.67% loan rate. So that's pretty much all you need to input. If you keep going down in, in these columns here, you can see Suite A, the capital cost is $69,599, and it's getting that, it's referenced from the last sheet. So make sure that that is correct, um, and it's in fact referencing that cell there. If you move these cells around, sometimes that link will um, not be right. The annual energy savings based on the um, existing use versus the suite improvements is 21,532 kilowatt hours. And that means that the payback is 14.7 years if the energy escalation continues to go at 4%, which is what it's been for the last 30 or so years. If energy escalation increases and 8% is a number that a lot of people put out as a reasonable estimate, considering the possibility of fuel reserves being low, we get a faster payback for the improvements that we've done. Down here, you can see I've got a little chart that, that, that plots profit, how much money we're making or losing, and the annual average rate of return. 
So that rate of return is what percentage rate we're getting back on the investment that we made. In 10 years, in this case, we would have a net negative profit or a loss of 26,710. We still haven't at this point repaid this $69,000 investment, but we are making 6% a year on that initial investment. After 20 years, we've made $36,000. And after 30 years, we've made $130,000. This represents an annual average rate of return 10%. Now, that's all with a 4% escalation rate. If there were an 8% escalation rate on energy, you can see our profits go up almost three times in that same period of time, in that same 30-year span. And our average annual rate of return is closer to 20%. So that is the suite without any renewables considered. Down here, we include the um, cost of renewable energy. So um, this capital cost is coming from renewable energy plus the capital cost for the improvements. And that is $98,000 for uh, annual energy savings of 31,115 kilowatt hours. The payback at 14 at 4% escalation is 13.8 years and at 8% escalation, 11 and a half years. Profit in this case for 10 years, it, we're still in the hole at $32,500, uh, but still making 7%. At 30 years and 8% escalation, we're, we've made $578,000 at 22% rate of return. Now it's important to note when considering these numbers, assumptions that are all listed here. The numbers are all in present day value. So even when we're talking about um, dollar amounts that are 50 years in the future, it's in 2017 dollars. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other assumptions that are listed here that we'll go over in class, but I want to, you to make sure that you understand them uh, because they're important and they affect the calculations quite a bit. To interpret these graphs, which are the main output here, I want to give you an overview of what's going on in the spreadsheet. You can see this is a fairly large spreadsheet, and what I've got down here is something called an amortization table. That amortization table is essentially taking the yearly um, electricity rate and then using that escalation factor of uh, either 4% or 8% to escalate the prices of electricity and fuel over time. So you can see in year 10, the cost of electricity is 28 cents a kilowatt hour and the cost of fuel is six cents a kilowatt hour. This uh, cost of electricity in turn affects what, our, what the effective annual energy savings is. So um, the, the, we're always, getting 21,500 kilowatt hours, but the cost of that differs um, according to our rate. What you see over here is the amount that you're paying each year for electricity and fuel, and then how that affects your cash flow. The first year we've um, laid out $69,599 for all the improvements that you see here. And then in at the end of that year, we've saved $3,572, so we can credit ourselves for that money. And eventually by this year, year end of 14, we've finally paid back our initial investment and now it's pure profit over time. So that's the way this spreadsheet is working. And this graph is just a graphical representation of that. So this is plotting years along the horizontal axis and profit and loss along the vertical axis. In year zero, when you start the project, your um, the the outlay is sixty nine thousand five ninety nine. So that was right there, and so we're negative sixty nine thousand there. Over time, as we're paying this back and getting the benefit of the energy cost, we're um, gradually getting to a net profit or loss of zero, and. I'd like you to please adjust these callouts. These callouts um, show the years to pay payback. That's the the point in time that your energy savings cost has paid back your initial investment. 
in this case, um, in th this one at 4% escalation, it pays back in 14.7 years. At 8% escalation, it would pay back in 12.2 years. And that's the these two blue lines. The two green lines represent the same suite, but with renewable energy. And that renewable energy is pushing towards a faster payback. So study these graphs and make sure that you can explain them, uh, and especially to yourself. Now, you also are probably going to need to adjust this vertical axis. If you allow this to be auto-sized, it's going to make some ridiculous boundaries because this is actually reading the whole um, 100 years that I've got plotted down here. Uh, in fact, what I'd like you to do is just look at 30 years of investment. I mean, you can actually go out further, but for this exercise, I think 30 years is a useful boundary. You're going to want to adjust this vertical axis so that you can see some information there. Um, and this is going to entirely depend on your particular suite. So adjust this in a way that you can see the numbers and that it tells a story about how much you're going to invest and how much you're going to uh, make. Now this graph over here is related. It is graphing the average annual rate of return of your investments as compared to the loan rate. And again, you're probably going to have to adjust these vertical axes as well. Um, I'm going to take this 20% and maybe 4% as a lower boundary so I can see these a little better. But this shows the four scenarios, so the suite with 4% escalation and 8% escalation, and the suite with renewables of 4% and 8%. And it shows the constantly changing rate of return as compared to the loan that we calculated before, which was at 7.6%, I believe, yeah. So at 7.6%. Now what this tells you is the point at which that loan becomes valuable to you because as soon as these each, each suite gets above this line, this becomes a valuable proposition. As long as the suite is below the line, it doesn't really pay to borrow the money. So it gives you a sense of how long you would need to borrow the money and uh, what some of those opportunity costs might be because once you've borrowed the money, you won't be able to use that money for other things. Likewise, if you, um, you could also see this, if you have the capital available, you don't need to borrow the money, you could see this as the opportunity cost of, the, um, of this investment, so you could compare it to other possible investments. So I have a choice of putting $50,000 into my building or $50,000 into the stock market. If the stock market is making 20%, I'm probably going to want to put it in the stock market rather than the building. But if the stock market is making, I don't know, less than 8%, I'd probably rather put it in the building and, be, uh, and, and assess the risk involved in, in either scenario.